Backstabbing, bitching, runaway brides and grooms, and sometimes, albeit very rarely, happily ever after endings. Married at First Sight <laughs> Australia sucks in Kiwi audiences every year with the drama, and this year is no different. It premieres on three this coming Monday. Here's a sneak peek. There's a call in my soul. Got to keep going. February, it's time to fall in love all over again. <laughs> Married at First Sight Australia starts Monday, February 5 on 3 Now and 3. Relationship expert John Aiken joins us to tell us what we can expect this year from the show. Good morning, John. Good Thanks morning, for being you with too. Us. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Season 11, if you can believe it. Season 11? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we when be. we set out, 2014 is when it started, and no one really thought that it would explode. And now, 11 years on, here we are. It's a huge show. It goes into 120 countries around the world, and I'm kind of at the pointy end of it. It's amazing. Wow. Now, I have seen little clips, and, you know, every season they say it's the most explosive. It's, there's yeah. so much drama, and but actually this season does look pretty unique. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think this year we've got probably one of our most diverse casts. Oh, we have yeah. a same-sex couple. We have... Uh, our oldest ever participant, Richard, at 62, wow. uh, he joins in the uh, the experiment. Uh, they're very relatable and down to earth. Uh, and throughout this series, there's a theme of boundary crossing. You know, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And I have to yell at them a lot, uh, but also the group kind of tries to rein in bad behaviour as well. So it's oh. fascinating. These people, though, have, have seen previous seasons now, right? So they've yeah. seen a lot of the drama that happens. Do you think they are genuinely coming on now looking for love and, and hoping that they will be the couple that will find theirs? Yeah, I think they all do want love, but there's no doubt now, particularly where they, you know, social media is huge, influencing um, podcasts, they're also aware of life after the show. Mm -hmm. And to a greater or lesser degree, they can cope with the spotlight and want the spotlight. Mm. And so we just accept that. But they've also got to want love. And then what you see is this unpredictable roller coaster ride. And we sit back and watch it like everybody else to see how they behave. We think we know them, but actually by about halfway through, that's when the masks come off and you actually really see who they are. When and people forget about the cameras. And they do, because it's on them 24-7 for 10 weeks. Well, they get used to them. Yeah. Oh, they, they, oh. they totally forget about them. Oh. And uh, it, it's fascinating because you're, you're seeing why they're single very quickly because they're doing things poorly in relationships. And the question is, are they going to pivot and do it better as the uh, experiment goes along? And a lot of them can't do it. Mm. You said this season was going to be the, the people in it are relatable and down to earth. Yes. The ones that I've seen in the previous seasons have not been like no, that at all. That's so right. is it going to be, is everyone very sensible this season? Uh, no, I wouldn't call them sensible, Lloyd. <laughs> I think I would... Just um, relatable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Human. Human is what I'd like to say. Uh, yeah, they, they make the same mistakes that we do uh, in relationships. Some are a little bit more uh, poor with their choices than others. But I think uh, the, when you see them, you know, some of them have had grief in their past and lost partners and are trying to push through it. Some have got abandoned issues. Some, you know, have uh, just consistently uh, struggled with intimacy. So you just, you see normal sorts of relationship issues that come up uh, in this cast. And I think you're really going to dive in and invest with them. Um, it's very exciting because you are working on the New Zealand series yes, too. Yes, yes. Tell now, us about I mean, that or what you can say yeah, about it. Yeah, anyway. I'm absolutely uh, delighted to be a part of it because I've had 11 years on the Australian version, so you get a lot of insights and understandings about how it all works. And then uh, this year, uh, TV3 and Warner Brothers wanted to reboot and relaunch uh, MAFS New Zealand, and they reached out and, you know, I was very keen to uh, get on board. So... Uh, we've got um, a wonderful cast, uh, it's in production, and, you know, uh, I've lived in New Zealand, so I feel like I know, and married a Kiwi, so I kind of know the New Zealand culture and the people and the relationship dynamics, so I'm very excited to be a part of it. Are we different lovers? 
Well, we can all be complicated at times in the bedroom, Lloyd. Uh, <laughs> Is that what you meant? No. <laughs> No, are we different wannabe lovers? Oh, no. oh right. Partners. Love at first sight. Well, I think we all, I mean, there are relationship issues that are, you know, universal. Uh, and, and the New Zealand uh, participants are very similar to the Aussie participants. Uh, they are uh, people that I think you're going to fall in love with. We went all around New Zealand to get uh, a really good diverse cast, which we have. Um, but I noticed that when I was with them, um, you know, what they talked about is what we hear in different um, series in Australia as well. Mm. Um, and, you know, I have to go hard at them for poor behaviour and hold them accountable. And uh, the commitment ceremonies get fiery. It's great. Do you think that... Um in terms of pairing people, that the, you know, what people say, the opposites attract, do you think that that is true? Or in your experience over the, the series, what couples have worked better? Ones where you put two people who are quite alike together or people who are quite different? Yeah, I think uh, you're looking at same values and core beliefs. That's very important that you match on that front. Whether you like the Wallabies or the All Blacks doesn't really matter, mm. you know, but at core, core uh, levels... Are you, you speaking about your own relationship? That's right, <laughs> that's right. I'm a long-suffering Wallaby supporter <laughs> and my wife just loves it when the Bledisloe Cup comes around. Uh, and so one of, the, one of the issues, you've got to be sure that your relationship expectations are the same. So when we're matching, those very core issues are going to be the same. But outside of that, uh, there's plenty of differences at surface uh, levels. Um, but what's, what we don't know is what's going to really happen when we press play in the experiment. Because, for instance, people say we're ready for the experiment, we want commitment. You put them in there and they go, well, actually, I'm not ready for commitment. Mm. So it, it's, it's very uh, surprising what happens. We think we know them but ultimately you're going to see the true selves come out in the experiment. Do, do you, does your wife watch the show? Loves it. Is she it? brings the girlfriends around, the champagne comes out, they yell and scream <laughs> at, the, uh, at the TV. Uh, they ask me some awkward questions. <laughs> and, uh, do they yeah. ever say, oh, I think you were too tough on, on that person or I would have handled that differently? No, I don't. You're the expert. So well, no, probably, no, they do they say, don't. why in the world did you match these two? <laughs> this is, what a disaster. Uh, but also they like it when I go harder. Uh, at them, and I think that's one of my roles now is to really call out bad behaviour and hold their feet to the fire because often they've never had feedback in their lives about the way they are in relationships. They just say, I'm right, you're wrong, and they just keep repeating old patterns. Does well, your wife give you a ribbing then? Like when she's like, Wow, you're giving them that advice, why aren't you like that in our oh, relationship? She, she keeps it Does real. She holds you to the standards. <laughs> yeah, yep. doesn't let me get away with anything. She said when we first met, I want a husband, not a therapist, please, John. Uh, yeah. And so no fixing and cut the psycho babble out. And I, so guess, that was it. I guess too, because if you're not calling out that bad behaviour, there are also people who are, are watching. Yeah. And and they might go, see, he treats her like that and you, yeah. he, she doesn't have a problem with it. Well, or, you that, know, that's so. a really good point. One of the secret sources to the show is that both singles and couples watch it. Singles watch it and go, I need to avoid that type of person. Mm. Uh, and couples watch it and go, we can't be like that. Mm. And so in a very strange way, you watch it and learn what not to do. Mm. And that is very valuable for a lot of people out there. And what I've noticed is that the harder I go at them, uh, the more people in the street stop me and go, thank you for doing what you did. Because I went out with a guy like that and uh, you've got to call them out. And, you know, gaslighting is a big issue that happens and people learn through the show. Uh, and I'm very privileged to be a part of it. Mm. Wow, very good. Well, we're privileged to have you on the couch mm. today and um, very excited for the Kiwi season coming up. Um, but this Australian season two uh, will be a biggie. Maths Australia relationship expert John Aiken, thank you for your time. Um, that is uh, going to be on three this coming Monday. So I, don't forget about that. I know you're married, but would you ever go on a show like that? Uh, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Like when you were single? No, <laughs> no absolutely no. not. No. Uh, it's pretty no. full on. I think Lloyd wants to go. <laughs> yeah, actually. I'm getting that. Yeah. 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 Well, look, you can get my email off the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else has worked. <laughs> oh, well, dear. stay tuned on that one, Lloyd. <laughs> Follow that up.